the Spit and Whittle Club. The saw blade ate through the red heartwood of the cedar board I was ripping to whip for the project I was undertaking. As the sawdust piled up under the table saw, the aroma of fresh cedar shavings entered my nose, arousing memories of my youth. Needing a break, I finished the cutting and then decided to sit for a bit and have a drink of ice water to cool me off. The scrap from the ripped board was about a foot long and three quarters of an inch square. Eyeing the piece made the memory even stronger. I took the piece from the table saw top, reached in my pocket, took out my pocket knife, unfolded it, sat on my stool, and began to run the blade along the length of the stick. With each shaving coming off the end of the stick, I found myself drifting back in time. They were known as the Spit and Whittle Club. The handful of retired men in the community used my dad's store as their regular meeting place and club headquarters. Even though I was not related to any of them, I knew all of them as uncle, and they treated me and most of the youngsters in the area as nephews. After breakfast, the men would begin gathering at the store. One by one, the old sages would soon congregate and begin their daily summit. In good weather, they would gather on the front porch taking their usual positions on the bench my dad had built for them or using an empty wooden soft drink case as a stool. During rain or cold weather, they would bring the bench and coke crates inside surrounding the old wood stove sitting in the middle of the store. This provided the perfect setting for discussing politics, religion, and other current events while the stove kept them warm and provided a receptacle for tobacco juice. Their mission and purpose was a simple one, bestow sage advice to the younger generation, solve the world's problems including, but not limited to, world peace, the cure for cancer, and where the next phase of the highway construction should take place, and to turn sticks of eastern cedar heartwood into piles of slivers. The first to arrive was usually Uncle Joe, who was the unintentional leader of the group. He lived the closest, only a couple of hundred yards from the store, but drove every morning nonetheless. He was a big man who always wore his starched roundhouse overalls with a long sleeve shirt and straw fedora, which seemed to be a, the uniform of the Spit and Whittle Club members. His eyes were sharp, but always half shut, as if he were about to fall asleep, but he was wide awake. Due to chronic emphysema, every time Uncle Joe began to speak, he prefaced it with a deep, inward, open mouth breath. His most memorable trait was his ability to pinch the flesh of a poor young man who had crossed him or just as a reminder of what could happen if one did cross him. If you happened to be sitting in his spot on the bench when he arrived, whether by chance or intentionally, he would simply sit next to you, reach out his closest hand, find a vulnerable place on your upper arm, acquire a small amount of this flesh between his thumb and curled finger, and begin to squeeze and roll with Herculean power, leaving a reminder that would last for days. But he always followed this punishment with a chuckle. Uncle Joe had a sense of humor and loved to joke and tease folks, and he was quite good at it. While a target for some of his young jokesters in the area, he could dish it out even better than he could take it. Once, my cousin and a friend decided to play a joke on him. They were sitting around the store one winter night, just after dark, and found a newspaper from a couple of weeks prior. The two devised a plan to deliver the evening paper to Uncle Joe. They bundled the paper as it would appear when delivered, climbed into the car, drove up the road a bit, and back down making the usual stops and turns the evening paper man would make on his rounds. Then they traveled up Uncle Joe's road, into his circle drive, tossed the old paper into the yard in front of the porch, tooted the horn, and drove off in the same pattern as the paper man would. Soon they were back at the store sitting around the fire discussing how well their joke had gone. They had enjoyed looking over their shoulders as they drove off, walking Uncle Joe's porch light coming on, and him walking out in bare feet into the cold to collect the historic document the boys had delivered. This brought a smile and a slight chuckle from my dad. I now realize he was not only chuckling about the joke itself, but about what he was sure would transpire in the near future. 
While still having a chuckle, the two culprits heard an uh-oh from my dad's lips and turned to see him with a big grin on his face looking towards the front door of the store. The squeak of the door hinges and the slam of the door spooked the two as they gazed at the big, slow, moving figure making his way to the stove. Without a sound other than the squeak of the wooden floor under his feet, Uncle Joe made his way toward the two shaking souls. Each tightened up as they realized Uncle Joe was making up his mind which one was to receive their punishment first. You boys think you're pretty funny, don't you? Uncle Joe offered as he settled in between the two young men. They both knew that trying to get away now would only mean even tougher punishment in the future. It was much better to take it when you knew it was coming than to be subject to a surprise attack when the air had cleared and their guard was down. Then the iron claw of death reached out and took hold of the first victim who took the pinching as long as he could before crying out in anguish and attempted to get away from the clamping fingers. Then the other perpetrator took his turn with much the same result. But in the end, they all had a good laugh and were once again friends. Of course, my dad had the best time during the whole event.